Welcome into the latest edition of the ESPN FC on the day that Real Madrid won their 14th Champions League title, beating Liverpool by one goal to nil in Paris. Ali Moreno, Craig Burley, Steve Nichol with us. We'll be heading to France a little later on in the show to get the reaction from Frank Leboeuf and Stuart Robertson. But let's start, shall we, with the fact that Real Madrid, on their way to winning this title, beat Chelsea, PSG, Manchester City and now Liverpool. Stevie, I'm drawn to you first. I wonder why. <laughs> How are you? I'm Oops. scratching my head and I'm sure Klopp and the players at Liverpool and everybody else is wondering how they lost this game. They didn't score. See, look at you, you wee smarty pants, Real Madrid ways. No, that's <laughs> the, well, isn't that not the fact? Well, well if, you, if you want a serious answer, the truth is the only way that, that Real were going to win this game was if the goalkeeper had a worldie, if they got a break... And if they actually scored with any scraps that they got, that was the only way they were going to win this game. And that's how it panned out. Because if you're Liverpool, with the amount of possession, and particularly the front three, you know, let's be honest, Alisson's had nothing to do. The back four did the job. The middle of the park did the job. The front three, that we are always talking about how good they are, well, when it mattered most, they didn't produce. And that's why Liverpool have lost, because they spent... What, 40, the 45 minutes in the, in the Real Madrid half? And if you do that, then you expect your playmakers, goal scorers, they have to perform. And they didn't. And they lost. They lost 1-0, as you correctly said. You've got to score a goal to win the game. Mm -hmm. And even the goal they lost wasn't even a decent bit of play. It was a shot at goal that was going wide that went straight to Vinnie Jr. So... Everything fell right for Real Madrid. Craig Burley. Well, if we think this is a bad way to win it, we might as well not have played the game because it was always going to be the case. Every big team they've played, big elite team, it's been the same. But it's not Real Madrid's fault that, that Luis Diaz got muscled out by Carvajal, that, that their final ball, Liverpool's, wasn't good enough that Real Madrid have signed a keeper who's now showing the skill set that we know he can. You and I had a discussion at the end of the week with Julian Lorenz about, uh, there was a question asked on, on a segment, segment that we did. At the moment, who would you take, Alisson or Courtois? And as good as Alisson is, both Julian and myself said Courtois because he's been brilliant this year. I mean, absolutely brilliant at times when Real Madrid have not been. And now once again... He surpassed his form of this year with this performance tonight. But it's also not Real Madrid's fault that Trent Alexander-Arnold can't really defend a back post. He didn't even know Vinny Jr. was there. So, when I was coming in today, I thought, right, is this about who deserves to win it? Because deserves is a word that's loosely thrown around. Right. But what does it actually mean? Because if, if it was about outplaying teams... If it was about creating chances, as I say, Liverpool deserved to win it yesterday. But it's just about getting the job done. And I'm afraid Liverpool just didn't get the job done. What was striking, when Courtois made that save from Salah, mm -hmm. we've got 10, 15 minutes to go, yeah. you could almost just see Liverpool just kind of go, it's not on night. Yeah, like, it's not going to happen. And contrast that to Real Madrid's attitude throughout the course of this competition. And you mentioned PSG and Chelsea and Manchester City. And think of the moments in which Real Madrid have been down and out. There was no doubt. That's it. They're done. No chance they're coming back. And they found something. Something magical. Something, some sense of belief. Something that we can't quite explain. And they were there in the end to take advantage of whatever opportunities were presented to them by these teams that I just mentioned. Liverpool, in those last 10, 15 minutes, where they could have shown that magic, where they could have shown that sense of belief, it was almost as if... Yeah, you know what, guys? Today is not the day. And, that, and that's unlike Liverpool because it's a high-spirit team, a high-energy team that towards the end were just throwing balls in the box and hoping that something happened, but not with a sense of belief that you would want to see from, a, again, a team that we like so much, that we enjoy so much because of the spirit that they show. And that spirit was gone late in the match. Fair? I don't know so much about the spirit. I think, you, I think at the end of the game, they're just clutching at straws and they're just throwing balls. You end up with your centre-back centre playing centre-forward. It's, it's not unusual 
things are not going your way, you're flinging balls in the box. I, 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 didn't, I certainly didn't at any stage get the impression that, that they had thrown the towel in, but I also didn't feel as though they were going to score. Right. Partly because it was a guy called Courtois in goal, and you just didn't see him getting beaten. And, and of course, by then, Real Madrid, as they've done from the start, were just managing to get a body in the way or get a header away or, or, or get a ricochet or whatever it may be. So, yeah, but I, 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 I don't think they chucked it in. It, it was just desperation time. I think the Nabi Keita shot summed it up. <laughs> That's the inspiration oh. time. <laughs> I don't know. He's a he's a he's a, a, away he's, a him, he's a complex kind of player. I think he's a, he's a marmite uh, sort of character and player. You either like him for his energy or for, get frustrated by some of the things he does when he comes on or he plays. But I just think in the modern game, we all talk about, and I'm not blaming Alexander Arnold, but it's something that we've pointed out quite a lot. A lot of people have. As a generalisation, not just the ball at the back post when he didn't even know he was there, but I think you look across the aisle at, at Carvajal, that experience, the, all the Champions League wins, one of the most informed players in Europe and Luis Diaz. Anybody that come up against him, he didn't give him a sniff. And I just feel, for all your attacking prowess, had that been him at the back post, right. he might have had himself in a better position. And I think that's the argument with Alexander-Arnold. It's gold dust going forward uh, at times. But there's, and actually, he's been defending better recently, one-on-ones on, one on in particular. Maybe not. I think that's his weakness when uh, the ball's on the opposite side. That's his weakness. On one-on-ones recently, I think he's looked a lot better. But then you just look at getting over the line. You look at the defending of that back four, and particularly Carvajal today. He snuffed out Diaz, hence the fact Diaz got the hook. And to your point... The fact that this was a matchup that coming into the game, you would have said yep. Luis Diaz against mm -hmm. Carvajal. If you're a Liverpool fan, you're thinking we have an advantage here. And we mentioned yesterday in the show that at some point, Trent Alexander-Arnold was going to have to show some toughness. That it, there were going to be moments in which he was going to have to defend. And I, I have to imagine that a guy like Danny Carvajal, with all the success that Craig just mentioned, you know what? This whole week has been about what Luis Diaz is going to do. <clears throat> I've played in important games. I've won Champions League. I know the kind of player that I am. And to take the challenge on and to see it. And it, it was almost a personal thing for Carvajal that you could see. 1v1, no, no, you're not going to get past me. And I'm going to grab you. I'm going to push you. I'm going to shove you. I'm going to win the ball. And you saw that from many players from Real Madrid. That we would like to talk about Liverpool coming in as the favorites. Real Madrid, maybe absorbing pressure. Maybe not playing that well, according to other people but playing well according to what they wanted to do and how they wanted to win the game, and in the, in the end, they did enough. Well, Alexander-Arnold, as we've always said, when you play Alexander-Arnold as a right back and you ask him to defend, mm. you're only doing it because you know what he does going forward, yeah. way, out, way surpasses mm. the deficiencies he has defensively. Unfortunately, today, particularly in the first half, the amount of ball he got, because him and, him and Vinny were playing cat and mouse, Vinny was trying to stay high, and the amount of balls that, that, that Alexander Arnold had, it didn't, there wasn't one he used well. Mm. And so, when you're gambling on somebody who you know is going to hurt you defensively, but you're doing it because of what they do going forward, when you can't get the one you're supposed to do right, and you fall into the category of what you can't do, a la the goal, then two teams you lose have, it, that's what happens. Two teams have come up short in that, this competition, who I think. I think we'd agree are, are better teams in Man City than Liverpool. I say better teams, better p patterns of play, uh, more dynamic, probably would beat Real Madrid over a certain amount of games, yeah. but on one-off games, they've came up, or in Man City's case, in, in two games, 180 minutes, they've came up short. And I think both have got the same scenario. They're not playing with a natural striker. Right Now, both have got away with it to a sense, and particularly yeah. Man City in the Premier League. Liverpool pushed them, and everybody was waxing lyrical about you know, how Man City is fluid, they don't need a striker. Well, they've just got, gone and bought Ellen Haaland, so clearly the manager disagrees. And Liverpool have done it very well as well with that three. However, in the elite moments, in big games when you might not get another opportunity, and you have all that possession, and you need to put balls in the box, and they are defending deep, that's where a, an out-and-out -out striker, I, I think, is worth his weight in goals. Just sniff something from nothing. From nothing. 
And that... You don't have that. that. You know, the front five is great, and it is, and they can rotate, and City have done the same. But, hey, they've gone out and bought the, the most informed striker in the world. Sure. Real Madrid went out and tried to get... Uh, Kylian Mbappe to come and help Karim Benzema. He decided to stay in his little pampered land in France and win nothing with PSG. Go to a real club and see what winning trophies is all about, Real Madrid. He for he for forgone that opportunity for the time being. But I just think from Liverpool's perspective, that that might have been the difference. A Harry Kane type character or somebody of that ilk who's playing in England might have made a difference. Uh, let's get some reaction then, shall we, from Paris. Alexis is with, goodness knows what Frank is wearing, and uh, Stuart Robson as well. <laughs> Frank is wearing his fancy leather jacket. It's the French way, isn't it, Frank? Well, it's, well, I don't know. I, I'm, I came with my scooter, so I have to protect myself. You he know? came with his scooter, but he's not sure if it's still in the place that oh, he yeah. left it. But let's talk about Real Madrid, because they are the champions of this Champions League. It's a story that I keep saying that we have seen it play out time and time and time again in La Liga, Robbo. You made the croissants representing yeah. Real Madrid. You got it correct. Uh, I didn't get the prediction correct. In terms no, you weren't with Liverpool in your prediction. But I have to say, I was really impressed with Real Madrid today. Yes. Mm. They Liverpool had chances, but there was some magnificent performance. Oh, we don't, we don't, we don't. I believe we're not hearing Robbo. So, Frank, let's go to you. We'll try to sort out Robbo's mic in a second. Frank, <laughs> thoughts on how Real Madrid did it? Uh, well, I, you know, I. After five minutes, I realized that something was going wrong with uh, with Liverpool. Normally, they pr they give the uh, high pressure. They do what they have to do to make sure they put under pressure the, the team that they play against. Today, it wasn't the case. And I always said, you know, you don't you don't play well a final. You win or you lose a final. And Real Madrid, I have to say, made all ingredients, you know, especially defensively, to to do well. Mm -hmm. On top of it. The goalkeeper was absolutely fantastic. Unbelievable. We, we talked about Danny Carvajal and the guys uh, said in the studio, the guy was, for me, the man of the match. He was a character. He showed that he was a warrior, that he didn't want to give up. I mean, that was fantastic from Real Madrid. Really disappointing from, uh, from Liverpool because they didn't play the way they normally play. And Rob, I'll lend you my mic, of course, when I ask you this question, because, again, we definitely have to get your opinion. And as Frank was sat beside me the whole time and we were saying this, time and time and time again that of course Liverpool are, are going there with the momentum and stuff but sometimes you just need this nitty gritty dirty way of winning the match is that something that Real Madrid has kind of perfected well I wouldn't say it was dirty I thought they played very well they defended well they had yes the keeper made four or five good saves but Edir Militao you talked about Carvajal Edir Militao was absolutely magnificent tonight he won challenges he looked quick he won balls in the air Valverde got the team high up the field on times they hit him with the, all their goal kicks they got it out to him on the right hand side he ran past Robertson time after time and I would also Casimiro didn't have a great game on the ball but defensively I thought he was magnificent he, he intercepted he got in between the centre halves at the right time he cut balls out that were played into the box and when they needed to, they played around Liverpool's pressure. They, they, I mean, some of their intricate play, one-touch passing, two-touch passing, I thought was brilliant. I don't think Real Madrid got enough credit tonight. A couple of Real Madrid fans behind us screaming Benzema Ballon d'Or. Well, I'm sure we'll get to that chat in just a bit, Frank. But we, before, at the beginning of the week, we were talking about matchups and battles that we were looking forward to. Um, which one, I suppose, really impressed you or lived up to the expectation today? Well, you know, we were all looking for, forward to seeing uh, uh, Trent alexander Arnold against Vinicius. But again, you know, I would have to go with... What uh, you expected happened? Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, well, even if uh, in the first 45 minutes I found uh, alexander Arnold, you know, getting some, uh, some, mm. some tackles, uh, good tackles, good, being in good position with Konate, um, taking care of him also in terms of uh, uh, covering him. But I have to say that that's the other side. And uh, really, for me... What did Carvajal the whole game long? Mm. Really, <laughs> I, I don't have a, I don't have a word for that because the guy impressed me like I never seen him playing. I remember him being so uh, uh, annoyed by the the, f the pace of Mbappe, yeah. you know, and uh, getting a yellow card and laughing at it. But today he was he had the pace, he had everything, the counter attack, the technique. He was he was mm. absolutely fantastic today. Frank was so excited watching Danny Carvajal today. He was saying, this is a player that they don't make anymore. In he doesn't day believe football. to the, this new generation. He belongs to our generation. <laughs> he belongs guy. to their generation. He said he's a scrapper and he absolutely 
made it kind of part of the beautiful game. Did you enjoy that kind of little battle there that he was having? Yes, I did. The first uh, couple of times Diaz got the ball, he played it square and made a run in behind Carvajal, and Mane didn't pick the pass out. Had he picked the right pass out or got it on the right angle, Diaz was in. And Carvajal realised that after a while, so he said, I've got to get tight and win the first ball that's played up to him, or I've got to drop off as he plays it square. And he did it perfectly. And I, I was impressed by his pace. I thought he'd get outrun by Diaz, but there was two or three times when he actually outrun Diaz. So he was magnificent. One of the things, though, if we're going to talk about Liverpool, I know, of course, we watched him in the Carabao Cup final, we watched him in the FA Cup final, um, and I remember there was a little birdie talking, should this be a concern that it went all the way, it's gone to penalties, and they hadn't scored, would they kind of bring that into this Champions League final? Was that much of a concern, and did it kind of play out? Well, I was much concerned about the, the last game that they played and the last 30 minutes of every game they played where I found them physically a little bit tired. Mm. The season has been long, mm. they, won, they won trophies, but they play many games. And the, 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 temper, the, how do you say, the rhythm that you put into the game when you're a Liverpool player is 100%. Mm. But you have to pay that price at a certain point. Mm. And I think today they show that to play on these holidays. Liverpool needs to score in that first 20 minutes when they were on top. The first couple of times that Real Madrid tried to, tried to play out from the back, Liverpool won it and you thought this is going to be difficult for Real Madrid. They needed to score then because once the game got slowed down, that's when Real Madrid started to play their football. That's when they played around the pressure. That's when they played those clever one and two touch passes. They could just leave two up front and still keep the ball and still pose a threat. It was really good from Real Madrid today. I give a credit to somebody that I, he was my uh, physical coach. I don't know if you say that in English. It was Antonio Pintus working for Real Madrid. That guy is the most talented coach that I've ever seen. We is he still working with you? Because you're looking fit. Oh, uh, no, no, he should, <laughs> he, should, he should be next to me very soon because I need it. But what he did with the players, you know, we're talking about Modric, mm. Cross, Casimiro, with mm. a certain we age, feel Benzema. That we kept saying that we're old and we were probably worried about how they'd stack up today. We thought Cross was going to come off. He, we thought he'd be the first. He, would, he wouldn't be able to cope with the intensity of the game. We and we thought he had to get out. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he did well. He, he, I mean, he, he got on the ball. Antonio Pinto is so yeah. hard on my friend. Oh, fitness coach galore. And speaking of looking fit, some people behind us were just screaming Zizou. I think they think one of these boys is Zinedine Zidane. That would be quite interesting. <laughs> we're not going to headbutt you, don't worry. <laughs> we won't headbutt you, but we'll send it back to the studio, Dan. Congratulations, Frank. Frank somehow making this win about himself. <laughs> it's nice to see the French uh, Henry Winkler anyway, isn't it? Yeah, Frank coming to a Champions League final dressed as the Fonz. I, I, I must have... Uh, I disagree. I think it was Robbo. I, I must have been putting the kettle on. I must have had ten cups of tea in that first half and missed Real Madrid playing through the press. At one point... I mean, in the second half, it happened more often, particularly as the game wore on when, when Liverpool were putting well, Liverpool, people forward. When Liverpool went behind, there was a couple, but nothing before that. I mean, a, a, couple Not, of times, a few times in the first half, it was Liverpool four, pushed four on, and they dropped it into Chris and Modric a couple of times, and they just hooked it on. Yeah. It was once or twice, I think, Valverde got in, but they didn't really cause any problems. So they, Real Madrid didn't know how to play through the press. That was the problem. And that Liverpool had them where they wanted them, just couldn't finish them off, mm. primarily because of their, fin their, their final ball and a brilliant goalkeeper. They couldn't. They couldn't get out. How many times did we see Canati fighting with Vinny Jr or Benzema with a big high ball, 40 foot in the air? That's all we saw in the first half. So, I, again, I'm, I'm, I'm with Craig. Up until the goal, I mean, really? Well... well, well where were they playing from? Because mm. you couldn't play out. You could argue whether Liverpool were that great the way they pressed, but they did press. But even then, they couldn't pass the ball out. They couldn't do it. They kept booting it. So I, I, I don't get that at all. What we kept saying as we were watching the game that Real Madrid had to take the possession in the attacking half and they weren't able to do that because they couldn't get out. And now they're dumping the ball up and hoping that Vini is going to somehow bring it down, somehow hold on to possession against Conate, that was never going to work. So I thought the role of Fede Valverde was really important there in that, okay, if you can't pass out and you're not finding any success with the long ball because these guys are not going to hold it up, then you have to run away from the pressure and that's where his athleticism came in at times, not all the time, but at times to relieve some pressure because he's able to run past people because of his ability to run. Something that Real Madrid does not have through the midfield. They don't have an ability to run. Just flat out, sprint, let's, get it, let's go get it, let's, let's show some pace. Well, he's able to do that. When he was able to then break through those lines and then they're now combining in the attacking half, 
then we're talking about more of what was going on in the second half of the game where Real Madrid seemed to be in more control than they were in the first half. Regardless, they were still giving up chances. Mm -hmm. Regardless, Courtois was still the man of the match. Yeah. Now, regardless, they still won it. Yeah, that's and, the, and that's the yeah. thing that they're going to care about. Uh, it, so, like, so how it, did they defend well? I, I, I'm, get, I'm finding it hard to get my head around it. And the more I think about the game, the more I'm thinking, Liverpool are going to be thinking, how did we not... You're thinking a lot. How did we not beat this team? Well, you think a lot. How did we not win this game? How did we not beat this team? because you came up... Because you can't, they didn't defend well. If your goalkeeper has a world there, he plays out his skin, makes two unbelievable saves and three other great saves, how are you defending well? I'm sure if surely that's not... Surely that doesn't... Well, does, is, uh, is it me? Does that? No, add I know up? what you mean. <laughs> is it me? <laughs> well, I think what we should the goal, say is the goalie's is the best player on the field, but we defended really well. How's that? I think what you know. Look, Real Madrid. I mean, fair play. <laughs> ah, yeah, I, you know, you got you got yeah. Chris and, and Modric. Oh, yeah, Chris is younger, but still in his thirties. Yes. Modric is thirty-six. Brilliant, yeah. brilliant player. Casemiro does a great job, but there's no legs. There's just no legs in there, right? So I think you've got to give Ancelotti a lot of credit here. Look. Real Madrid have become brilliant at what they do. What they're doing at the moment is not the Galacticos Real Madrid. He's gone in there, you know, from a, a, from a, a, a job at Everton that was going nowhere. I bet he couldn't believe it going back to getting this opportunity. But he's gone in, he's gone, right, we're not going to play like this tiki taka Man City, the Barcelona. We, we can't do it right. with these totally players. Cool, yeah. We cannot do it. We haven't got the legs in midfield. What do I need to do? Keep Benzema on side, get a solid back four, make sure I've got protection in front, work out who my best full backs are. Don't forget, Alaba started the season at left back, mm -hmm. right? Then he went back into his preferred position these days at left centre back. How do you get the best out of Benzema and Vinicius Jr.? He's done all of those things. He knows he can't play and he knew he couldn't play some expansive game. But the way they've done it, and some of it's a little bit of luck, and some of it's good defending and great goalkeeping and brilliant finishing. Just clinical. But he's realised that and he's just managed the whole situation brilliantly. Uh, Robbo's been listening to this whole conversation. Robbo, I feel you need a right to reply to what Stevie was saying against you. <laughs> yeah, I heard all what was being said. And, and, you know, Stevie's right that they did create lots of chances, Liverpool. But I would still say they had some outstanding defenders. I, I, watch, I watch watching Real Madrid more than anything. And Eder Militao... Didn't put a foot wrong. He won every header. He came out and challenged at the right time. Even when Firmino came on and they were playing with Firmino in behind the main strike, he kept on coming out and making interceptions. He was quick when Diaz ran past Carvajal on a couple of occasions earlier and he got out there and made challenges. I thought Alaba, who was a weakness, I thought, before the game and didn't play particularly well for the first 20, 25 minutes, he made some good tackles. And Mondi had a job to do out on the left-hand side, which was a difficult job because he's been outnumbered for the first, in the first half because Liverpool had three players out there. Henderson was going out there. They were creating a three versus two and they were getting crosses into the box. And that's one of the reasons they were creating chances. But in terms of their understanding of the game and the way they were able to eventually to control parts of it and play around the pressure and still make chances when they didn't have that much of the ball, I thought, and you're absolutely right, Ancelotti has done a magnificent job with a very average team, in my view. What chances are we talking about here? I must well, have been, they, I must they, have they been had a chance catching that, I, I thought the, I thought the, well, well, so I thought the goal should have, should have stood. They had one shot at goal. I thought the goal should have stood. And they, they had plenty of opportunities when... when what about when what about oh, Sabayas was running was, through and should That was the first time they were... There, there, was, there was times when... There was, yeah, there the was times when... goal was the first time they got Vinicius that far Junior. up the field. Well, and, then they, and then you only have one Liverpool shot biased, at goal. You? That's the problem. No, you're Liverpool one biased. Shot at goal, that's why Robo. pundits should never be supported. Liverpool biased. I'm sorry about that. How am I biased? You just stood there. You just stood there and said that the goalkeeper was man of the match. He made four or five great saves, but they defended brilliantly. I'm sorry, that doesn't add yeah, up. That's like one and one makes three. Liverpool, Liverpool are more athletic. Liverpool, before the game, I said would win the game because I thought they would be more athletic, they were a better team, and I couldn't see how Real Madrid were going to get out. And that was, to a certain degree, the case. But in the end, when the game became a technical game and it became slower... Kroos got on the ball, Modric got on the ball, Casemiro got on the ball, and then Benzema's one and two touch play with Vinicius Jr. at times I thought was brilliant. That's how I saw the game. You might see it differently. That's how I saw the game. Well, I have to say, well, I, I mean, I don't I, know. I, I'll sort of jump and in. And actually, we're at the game, so I, we can see the whole I, picture. I, I, so, ooh, well, the whole picture, we can see ooh, some of the movement. We're at the game. Well, 
<laughs> the way I think I'll tell you what, Rob, I'm glad it was in there. There was two or three times. Let me, let me, let me tell you, I, am, I, know, I know, I know, no, delighted I didn't go to the game. I am not being accused of any Liverpool bias or bias. Oh, yeah, but, because, yeah, by the way, the one thing I would you know, say, you, 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 you know when they were on the ball, probably defended the supporters as well. The one thing I would say is, is that yes, Benzema and Vinicius Junior really started to link up well, but that came about, in, in my opinion, that came about by the desperation of Liverpool because it really opened up, and then with 15, 20 minutes to go. They were even more exposed than normal, and that left space for the ball into Benzema, a little flick out and, and runners in behind. We, mm. Good grief, we even saw Danny Sabayas running in behind <laughs> at the end. With the first touch. You know, with his first <laughs> touch. Yeah. So it did open up, and I think as well as they've linked up all year and they have been brilliant, I think the fact that the game was just getting away from Liverpool and he was throwing the subs on and they were throwing, you know, probably seven or eight people forward and leaving the cell two against two or three against two, then we saw that little bit of link up between Benzema and uh, Vinicius Junior. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+.